Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts. Today is going to be one of the potentially most difficult missions that I've ever undertaken. It was sent in by Colonel Ilbrink, one of my naval architects over on the Patreon program, and this is what he wants me to do. It is June 1942, and the French Free Forces have openly, sorry, have secretly, not openly, have secretly put together a small escort fleet, commanded by André Lemonnier for Operation Checkpoint. The goal of Operation Checkpoint is to capture and secure the airfield and island of Palma, 293 miles southwest of Marseille. Palma's airfield, as well as the islands, are crucial as an FOB for successful Operation Torch landings in Oran and Algiers, of which Captain Lamonnier is familiar, and it must be captured. Recent intelligence places an Italian patrol fleet in the western Mediterranean near Palma. I get four heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, five destroyers, and six transports that need to make it to safety. The patrol fleet from the Italians might be three years, well, older than my fleet, which means almost no tech advantage, if any at all. But they get one battle cruiser, five heavies, five lights, and ten destroyers. But wait, there's more. To win, I would have to eliminate the entire fleet and lose no more than three transports. Or keep three or more transports safe for six hours of in-game trip time to Palma. <sighs> I need to sink the entirety of the fleet, huh? That's 21 ships. And I have four heavy cruisers to do it with. But wait, there's more. I have design limitations. I have to build a heavy cruiser that is no heavier than 20,000 tons. That's not really a problem, because the displacement for the French heavy cruiser can only go to 15,000, so that's fine. Speed is mandated to be 34 knots. Range is ordered to medium, and I have to have, or at least if possible, a main armament of 5 times 3 8-inch guns. So that's 15 8-inch guns. That's a lot of firepower. Oh, um, and it doesn't end there. No, 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 it doesn't end there. I have a budget of 38 million per ship. So, I have a ton of things that I need to keep in mind. And on top of that, I have a budget and I have to sink, well, all the things. Or survive for six hours of in-game time. But that is basically really freaking boring. So, I'm going to try and do as much damage as I can, but I don't really expect my entire fleet to survive. Especially the heavy cruisers are going to be in a probably a pretty rough state. Now, what I have access to here is the super firing medium barbette. And, um, oh, sorry, I need to bring the tall barbette. The medium barbettes, they can sit here and they can sit there. So once you have one of these things, you could put a medium super firing barbette after it. But I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that, because it would have a bit of difficulty firing over that turret. But of course, you could put some smaller secondaries over there. Now, let's first try and fit the guns uh, and also install the improved rangefinders, uh, some sonar system and a generation two radar, which already puts me at 33 million in budget, right? I haven't even started yet. I need to get autoloaders, 33 million too. Okay, I'm gonna go triple on the bow. And then dual, uh, dual, double on the stern. 36 million. Oof. Let's bring the tower a bit farther forward. That should fix the aft weight offset a little bit. Okay, um, I have 1500 tons remaining. No joke, and I still have to add a funnel. Mega funnel. The problem is that all of these design restrictions, they, well, they're not so much counteract each other, but they make my life very, very, very difficult. Because I'm fighting not only a ship which is bigger and more powerful, but also a ship that will probably do a lot more damage to my ships, which means I start a negative snowball. I will lose more ships, which means I get to output less damage. And as I output less damage, I then find that I won't be able to do enough damage to uh, sink the ship fast enough. Or the ships, actually. The, uh, 
the multiple fleets or multiple ships that are currently going after me. If I go for our diesels, I was thinking diesel engines because they're cheaper. But these are lighter. No, too expensive. Gear turbines too, 675% engine cost. Uh, standard turbines? No, too expensive. See, diesels have a pretty decent price tag. The diesel 1s, that is. Diesel 2s are slightly more expensive, a plus 250% engine cost. Um, yeah, okay. I still have about 600k left in both, uh, well, both in money and 600 tons in displacement. Now, here's the fun part. It's not just cruisers that I'm taking down. It's also destroyers. And in order to succeed against the destroyers, I'll probably need to do a bit more work on my secondary armament. And at the same time, make sure that they fit. Four inch guns might be the best option. Decent rate of fire, decent amount of damage and a decent range. 10.1 clicks. And um, with the semi auto loaders, I had to reduce them from full auto loaders. I get a decent reload. Right. These things weigh 41 tons and cost me 50k. Let's put a couple on here. Here. Come on, there's to be a spot right there. Okay, and maybe a few triple triple threes. No, triple twos maybe. Six kilometer range only. Cutthroat range for a ship like this. Okay, I can put that one there as well. Right, as far as guns go, we now have a uh, substantial main armament, which is 15 8-inch guns. We have 18 4-inch guns and another eight in 18 2-inch guns. I'm really hoping that that's going to be enough to scare off the destroyers. I considered going with torpedo tubes, just to make sure that I can disperse formations faster. But it turns out that those are really expensive. 675k for a quintuple launcher of only 18 inch. I'm not even trying to get any, let's say, 23 inch. That would cost me one and a half million per launcher, right? So it's three million for uh, sets on both port and starboard side. That is uh, pretty problematic. Even going with a couple of dual tubes, let's say 21 inch, that's 300k per side. So, boom, that just cost me 600k, and yes, they'll do a lot of damage. But it also means that this cruiser has to approach to suicide range. Which is not something I really want to do, considering my turning circle is 770 meters. So, I am in a lot of trouble when it comes to this ship. I have a little bit of barbette armor, just standard thickness, some torpedo protection, double bottom hull, so make sure that if I get hit by a torpedo, it doesn't do that much damage. Citadel 4, turtleback class. Anti-flood 2 and reinforced bulkheads 1. I might be able to save on this, but it means that my armor is going to be worse. Yeah, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. It saves me 300k. Sorry, 300 tons and about 100k. So it's really not that interesting. Propellant. Lid I2 is a death sentence for most of these ships, especially as the barbettes are not heavily armored. So I would have to go with something that reduces flash fire chance. Something like two powder explosives. But the problem is I get over budget. So I would have to put something else at a lower uh scale or a lower tech level which could be the funnel or the boilers but when i do that i find that the ship does not have the engine efficiency at 38.8 semi oil saves me a bit but makes the displacement worse so that's not really an option uh, induced boilers too expensive and i don't really see where else i could save Let's see, funnel cost 75%, funnel cost 90%, sorry, no, that's capacity. Funnel cost 20%, this is worse, but makes the engine efficiency far better. No, actually not that much, 6% only. Um, I'm going to save on this, the acoustic system. 
by saving a bit on the acoustics, I am going to require my other ships to pull that particular problem. So the destroyers and the light cruisers better come with underwater acoustics because they will need to spot stuff for my ships. I went with an increased complement of shells to make for, well, not so much make up for, but at least hopefully do enough damage and just continuously fire at all targets. I have 608 uh, shells per gun. So I should have plenty of ammunition, but with these auto loaders or semi auto loaders, this can go pretty quick. I still have a bit of money left and a bit of displacement, but I really don't know what to put it in other than a bit of armor. Uh, although you could argue that even that might not make that much of a difference. Because if a battle cruiser shows up at even medium range, I will take a ton of damage. No matter how, how well or how poorly you armor up your ship, it's going to be in trouble. Now this turns out to be too expensive. Nine inch. Uh, conning tower. No, 7.6. That's the edge of it. That means I have $1,200 uh, left. And I'm just under budget as far as displacement goes. So this is going to have to be it. The Depuis de l'Homme. This is the ship that I'm going to have to take into combat. No upgrades for auxiliary engines. No improved propeller shaft. Uh, an engine efficiency that is decent. It's something I can live with at least. Two powder propellant. Good rangefinder, good improved radar rangefinder. But survivability of this ship, I kind of doubt it. Let's see if I can do any damage with these things. Okay, let's see what we get. The enemy has been spotted to the north. The engagement range starts at 28,000 meters. I have a bunch of transports in my lines and these things are controlled by the AI. I cannot work with them. I hope that they disengage, but it's not up to me. What the AI usually does is make them turn away. But keep in mind that they are running only at, what is it, 12 knots, the Charles Martel? 13.5, uh, 12.5, 13... 5, 13 15 and 12.5. So they're not particularly fast. Now let's see how my formation is aligned. I want to have all the heavy cruisers in one group. So the uh, Ambuscade is going to not scout for the battle line, it's going to join the battle line. I want you guys to maintain formation, or rather get in formation. Um, the destroyers, Mécanicien Principal Lestin, Verdun, Guerfou, Fuchs, and uh, I thought I had a fifth. Did I only get blessed with four destroyers? No, there it is. Commandant Lucas. These destroyers, they look... That's an interesting turret shape, by the way, these five-inch duels. Uh, good turning circle, good speed, 36 knots, minimum bulkheads, so they want to die quickly, that's alright. Um, torpedo launcher there, torpedo launcher there, and a single tube there. Complement of torpedoes, increased. That's good, so I can fire four salvos. They have super heavy shells, anti-flood 3 and sonar 3. Interesting destroyer, this one. They have a whole... <laughs> a whole one dual 2-inch... No, not even. Uh, a single 2-inch barrel? Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, light cruisers. Katina, Roland, Prote, and Milan. Okay, guys. What do we have on these ships, then? Looks like a nice complement of 6-inch guns. 15 barrels. That's really handy against light cruisers and destroyers alike. Uh, three inch guns I find a bit lacking. I'm not sure why they didn't have any more on those. Many bulkheads, that's good. What I was hoping for was more torpedoes, but I'm not getting those. They do have sonar 2, coincidence rangefinder 5, and generation 2 radar. 
Increased ammo for torpedoes, which is nice. Light shells could come in handy against destroyers, because you don't need to hit them that hard. Propellants TNT. Corrupt 3 armor. Orcs 4 and shaft 2. Turning circle 491. That's a pretty impressive turning circle. I need you to join battle line 4. Which is all the light cruisers together. And the light cruisers are... Well, they're not so much going to screen for the heavies. I want that to be the task of the destroyers. And the destroyers were... Was it div 5? Yeah. So, div 6. You're going to join div 5. Okay, destroyers first. I want these to start spotting and to start torpedoing. They have a range of 9 kilometers, which means that they are in a pretty risky spot. They have to get quite close to deliver their torpedoes. Not ideal, but I'll just have to try and make something work with these things. And in the meanwhile, I want my cruisers to really only fire when they feel confident enough to fire. To reiterate what my rule set is, survive with at least three transports for six hours of in-game time. And um, make sure that three or more transports stay alive for six hours. Or eliminate the entire enemy fleet. Only. Alright, hello, you must be the battle cruiser. Looks like a slightly older design, but 15 barrels. Although you need to go very much broadside in order to get this turret to fire. So effectively, I'd say somewhere between 6 and 9 barrels. Looks like a serious dreadnought. Oh, sorry, a serious battle cruiser. The problem is, she's not alone. She is definitely not alone. There is a lot more out there. We just haven't spotted it yet. Range, 25 clicks. Alright, let's see if I can get the destroyers lined up and the transports moving away. The transports are sort of moving away. But of course, by doing that, they're also interfering with the rest of my formation. Okay, something has spotted the uh, protectrice. Protectrice. Which I think is the female variant of protector. Range 19, firing range 17. So I have been spotted. That usually means that the enemy battle cruiser is up to no good. That's not a battle cruiser, that's a torpedo. No, that's not, sorry, it's not a torpedo boat, it's a destroyer. Uh, fair amount of torpedoes on there. Two quads, I think. I might be able to outgun them with my destroyers. But I have five destroyers, and they have ten. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Um, no, we're going to go that way. I first want to see if I can get the entirety of the fleet lined up neatly. And just cause as much of a disturbance to the enemy fleet as possible so that my transports can make it out alive. Is that battlecruiser opening up yet? Well... I think so. She's thinking about it. 15, 14 inch guns. Fun times. Okay. Looks like nobody's shooting yet. I'm keeping my weapons safe. I don't want them to fire yet. Only when I feel like I have a decent enough accuracy will I open up. I'm thinking... Yeah, let's use the destroyers first, do a torpedo attack, see if we can sink something. And maybe then follow up with the light cruisers and the heavy cruisers together. There is also very much a risk that the enemy is already torping my formation. That's a lot of Italian ships out there. Look at the range on those 50, sorry, on those 5 inch guns. 12.4 clicks. That is pretty impressive. Oh, you're engaging the destroyers. Interesting. Since 
this is probably going to be a pretty long mission. What I could try and do is have the enemy just run down their ammunition. I hope that I don't lose too many ships in the process. But if that battle cruiser has uh, that many guns, she probably will also carry quite a bit of ammunition, depending on whether she has a standard complement or a reduced complement of uh, shells. I'm already getting engaged by something else. Are you a heavy cruiser or a l no? You're a light cruiser. Eight barrels, but seemingly of a pretty sizable caliber. Understood. Range: thirteen clicks. You're still out of range. As far as the torpedoes are concerned, anyway. Um, save on the main guns as well. I have 1,500 shells, but they're going to go quick. Especially at 8.6 second reload. If that battle cruiser dies, I feel a lot more confident about my chances to actually get my cruisers involved. But in order to do that, I first have to plow through this light cruiser. The heavy cruisers are still sitting at 17 kilometers out. And since it's a light cruiser, fast, relatively small ship, my chance to hit is probably pretty dreadful. Yeah, chance to hit 0.3. Not worth my time. Oh shit, are they engaging the transports now? This is exactly why I generally don't like scenarios which involve transports. Because they're too fragile. They cannot take any kind of evasive action based on what I need. I'm just at the mercy of the AI. If the AI decides to go full stupid, and it's not unusual for them to do just that, then I have no counterplay. 16 clicks, chance to hit point 0.1. Well done. Hold your fire. Now, where do I want to attack first? We're pretty nicely on track with identifying the battlecruiser fully. The battlecruiser, surprise, surprise, is their flagship. Is this a heavy cruiser by any chance? Yes, 10 barrels of 7-inch caliber. They have 33 5-inch guns. Come again. You can call those things a destroyer's bane. You do not want to approach that with a destroyer. Way too much firepower. Now, the fleet does seem to sort of move in this direction. So if I can torp... Let's say I want to torp the battlecruiser. I might accidentally hit something else as well. So we're going to cruise towards the battlecruiser and hope that I can still get the torpedoes away before all of these ships flood out. Won't be easy. Minimum bulkheads is... There we go. Mechanician is already disengaging. Minimum dis or Minimum bulkheads is basically a death sentence to most ships. Because they get hit, they start filling up, and they die. Period. It's that easy. Look at the mechanism. It is fighting it. Anti-flood 3. Come on, guys. I need you to fight very valiantly and very deadly. Especially these torpedoes. 21 inch. I have high hopes. But the problem is their range. They're fast torpedoes. And that causes not just one issue, but two. They're fast, but they're also really easy to spot. And since light cruisers usually carry a... <laughs> there we go. A really good sonar system. Sonar 3. It's very, very easy for them to spot them. Alright. Engage the light cruisers. Protectrice. Dupuis, Marseillaise, and Ambuscade. Engage. I think I have to call the numbers a bit before the light cruisers, or before the destroyers can push in. It's too dangerous. It's too much firepower, and I didn't really keep in mind just how poorly these things are designed. 
I mean, I like the design, but I hate the minimum bulkheads. They're just so fragile. How am I going to fix this mission impossible? Oh, the torpedoes already coming this way. That's nice. Back hard to port. Looks like we're already going to lose one destroyer. Yep. Heavy flooding. Surprise, surprise. Heavy flooding in minimum bulkheads. Who's leading this formation? Garfu, fall back. I have done exactly two hits for 55 damage. Against the Montebello, which happens to be smoking up. Uh, switch target to the heavy cruiser. The French should have led this fleet with at least one battle cruiser. Because against these numbers, there is just not really that much counterplay, especially with weak ships. And budget limitations on the ships that I do have. These have maximum bulkheads, of course they do. They're destroyers, few bulkheads, light cruisers, standard complement of bulkheads. Looks like they get reduced. No, standard amount of torps. Okay. Now the light cruisers. There goes another destroyer. Jesus. At least we might be killing off a destroyer. Or whatever that is. Yeah, it looks like a destroyer. But those destroyers had a decent amount of bulkheads, right? At least not minimum. They had few, I think. Yeah, few bulkheads. We're just doing sheer volume of fire here. Because my accuracy is pretty poor. Okay, I've lost two ships. The transports, as of right now, are not getting engaged. Yet. But that destroyer... How far away is that? Falco. 15 clicks. Right. I probably need to use my destroyers to intercept their destroyers. Just to do a bit of damage against them, to keep them at range. And in the meanwhile, I would love to just send out a torpedo volley, volley but I couldn't afford torpedo launchers. A bit of damage against the Marco Polo. Another 96 damage there on the DD. Come on, flood out. Another fire. I don't need fires, I need flooding. Floodings, I say. <laughs> the Protectrice has already been hit by the 14 inch guns from the battle cruiser. She's starting to take on water and her buoyancy is reduced to 85%. This is such an impossible mission. Now, on the one hand, I like trying these things. On the other hand, um, I'm thinking, you know what? If the mission is proving to be too difficult, too impossible, then it doesn't really make sense. But then again, um, on the one hand, I have to try and appease the purists who go... If the scenario says this, then you must do this. And there is something to be said for that. I mean, the creator of the scenario wanted to get a particular outcome, I suppose. Or wanted to set a particular challenge. But sometimes I get scenarios where I just immediately go, Nope, that's completely impossible. It just doesn't make sense. And I saw this one, I thought, you know what? Maybe... Maybe there's hope if I can design a really good heavy cruiser. But I don't particularly expect these heavy cruisers to do that much. How heavily protect is that battle cruiser? Minimum bulkheads. Okay. Oh, torpedo incoming. Art port. Light cruiser line. I'm hoping to sort of flank with the light cruisers. Maybe doing some damage against the ships that are lagging behind here. Why is not the entire division engaging the battle cruiser? The Diana. Alright, light cruisers. Time to push in. 
Another flooding on the destroyer, and there she goes. Okay, one f destroyer is finally done. Diana is on fire. Can we actually pen that ship at this range? Because we're trying to do deck pen, I think. Nah. 16% chance. So that's really not that useful. I would have to probably close in a lot more. And then I'd run into a 16... No, sorry. Uh, f about 14-inch belt armor. Which means I'd have to be at around 7.5 kilometers to pen that. That is... Pretty substantial. Oh, shit. Uh, open fire. Target Montebello. Normal smoke. Because they're already starting to butcher my transports. Heavy cruisers, new target. Light cruiser Montebello. Light cruisers. You guys probably cannot do much yet. Increase the flank. And go into that fleet. Engage the light cruiser, because we're not doing damage against the battle cruiser, that's for sure. Garfou. Torpedo away. At least the Montebello has no further torpedoes. Oh, the Montebello is running. Never mind. What's my chance to pen that ship with a destroyer? Ooh, would you look at that? That's a 40% chance to pen. It's dropping because the ship's moving out of range and highly angled. But that was not bad. What's my chance to pen the DD? 80%. Good work. The thing is, hitting a destroyer. That's not too easy. The battlecruiser still pushing in. Uh, is there any hope that I... Torp the battle cruiser. Twelve clicks out. Um, turning circle nine hundred and seventy-nine, and sonar two. Which means that she probably spots the torpedoes way before they arrive. Nevertheless, it's probably my best bet of getting rid of that big ship. Two of my heavy cruisers have taken some damage. But what I'm more concerned with is the lack of damage output on these ships. They're just not doing the damage that I need them to do. Light Cruiser is now in contact with the Suprema, which she has no chance to damage, at a mere 5% chance to pen. Lovely. Torpedo in the water. Source Intrepido. Class. Pretty fast. 21-inch torpedo. Battle Cruiser at 10-3. Hard to port. Try not to get hit. I know your smoke screen's out. Living on a prayer. 10 kilometers. Range 9-9. Nine, nine, which means... I am officially inside of torpedo range. If the ship makes any single course correction... Then the torps won't hit. Nope. Listen up, son. Torpedoes away. Okay, good work. Just not from one of the last launchers. That sucks. Ooh, flash fire on the Intrepido. That might have been due to the destroyers. I know that there is a torpedo in the water somewhere from the Intrepido, but I'm very much focused on trying to sink the Diana. Are you not in range yet? 9593. Nine, yeah, you are in range. Come on, buddy. Make something happen. Intrepido, despite a flash fire, is still here. Well, it looks like I blew the turret off of the barbette over there. Okay. What are my light cruisers up to? Still skirmishing with a heavy cruiser that they can't pen. Yeah. It's the, really the only target that I can hit. Okay. And the heavy cruisers. 
Hello? Where are you guys at? Here you are. Increase speed back to full. Foo still hasn't torped? What bullshit is that? Oh, no, 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 no. 9.3 kilometer range. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Garfou, you have done your business. Fall back. And so far as you can with the damaged engine. Torpedo to Diana. Diana's leaving. Crap. Uh, torpedo the uh, Irequito. Irequieto. Any torp, any torp, any torp. Come on. Torpedoes away. Good. See ya. There is just too much that needs killing here. Uh, intrepido. Any torp, any torp, any torp. The Diana is definitely out of range now. Okay, food to fall back. Come on, Lucas to fall back. Heavy cruiser status. What are you guys working on? The light cruiser? No. We're going to see if we can damage the heavy cruiser. Incoming torpedo. Smoking up. What sort of launchers do you have? A quad. Okay. Protectrice. Speed. 27.8. Hence the entire formation is running at slightly slower speeds. Whoa, Milan. Turn. That should level out. Okay. Heavy cruisers might be at risk, though. A torpedo hits the destroyer? Huh. Wasn't paying attention to Fu. The Fu did launch her torps. But I'm really not optimistic about any chances of hitting these things. Because these torpedoes, they're fast. But they're also pretty... Pretty easy to dodge. Because they have such a high detectability. How are the light cruisers for ammo? 2700. Okay. So we're good. Suprema. Just took a scratch. Tis but a scratch. Here are the torpedoes. But lately, I have found the AI has gotten exceptionally good. Oh, there goes the DD. Has gotten exceptionally good at just dodging. Just making sure that a ship happens to turn at the last possible moment. Sirena just casually cruising towards a torp, confident that she won't get hit. Milan is taking fire, and we are looking at a shield of destroyers and heavy cruisers here, with the battlecruiser far in the back, but at least it's silent now. It's not actively engaging me. Chance to pen the Suprema is pretty low. Yeah, I'm going to keep the heavy slightly behind the lights, because the lights have a decent sonar suite. Let's see if we can pen some destroyers. Just do some damage against the DDs. Whoa! Flooding on the battlecruiser? We did land a torpedo. Even if it's just the one, it can cause substantial amounts of flooding. 70%. 65%. 60 55. Wow, she's really not reacting well to that torpedo. 50. But I'm not the only one doing torpedo damage. I just got torpedoed on the Milan as it was too busy figuring out how much damage the ship took. So the Milan is probably toast. So I might have done some damage to them, but I lost a ship in return. That is a pretty shitty trade-off. Giuseppe Garibaldi, chance to pan, 14%. Suprema. Suprema just launched torpedoes, didn't she? 
That is a nasty thing to do. Hard to starboard with both of the formations. And they're also doing damage to my transports. Oh, one of the transports got torpedoed. Right. Let me tell you, this is going to be the last scenario that I do that involves transports. I am just so fucking tired of having those things do stupid shit. Not avoid torpedoes, for example. I am not going to play any more scenarios with transports until I can manually control them. I would love to manually control the transports. Because then I could also have, potentially, uh, transport wars, if you want to call it that. Where I have a transport fleet and the enemy has a transport fleet. And we just see who does the most damage with them. As far as damage does, by the way, or damage goes, I have managed to inflict only 2100 damage. Of which a decent part was probably a torpedo. Just that torpedo hit on the battlecruiser. In return, I have taken 8200 damage from this massive fleet. And it looks like there's just no way for me to do a whole lot more than that. So what I'm going to try and do is just continuously close in. And at least get some of the DDs killed. And push in with the heavy cruisers. Allowing the heavies to start finally penning their heavies. And maybe, maybe sink a few more ships. So this is going to be a pretty Hail Mary maneuver. How much is my ammo left? 2360. Okay. We've put the uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi on fire. Not that anyone cares. <laughs> Roland. We still can't really hit the destroyer. That one with high explosive. Oh, there we go. Now we're hitting the destroyer. But I think that's the second destroyer that I would sink, right? Because the rest of them are still very, very much kicking. Sure, some of them have taken some damage. But it's not nearly as much damage as I would like them to take. Okay, maybe I can get this one. Intrepido's dead. Good. Next, Benedito Carioli. Sorry, uh, Cairo... Caroli? Caroli. Another transport bites the dust. Heavy cruiser takes a bit. Destroyer takes a bit. What? Hold on. DD hits another DD? How'd you pull that off? My ships are over there. Okay. I guess somebody pulled the trigger on the torpedo launcher and accidentally torped one of their own. Interesting. Not that I mind. Maintain fire on that fire on that little uh, destroyer. Uh, oh, Commandant Lucas might might have an opportunity to no <laughs> do another torpedo run on the Diana. Come on. Get the, the Quinn offline. Quintuple. Launch it. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Bye bye. Job done. I'm out of here. Roland is flooding. Benedito. Benedetto is also flooding, but seemingly made of sterner stuff than my light cruiser. Many bulkheads versus, what was it, few? Few. Torpedo in the water. Chance to pen the heavy cruisers. 18%. We're getting a little better at doing some damage. What are we trying to hit? Heavy cruiser. Right. Um, what if I want to hit this one? Can I pen that? Not really. Still only 20%. Not really worth it. Torpedoes are away against the Diana, which might have detected the torpedoes. Because 
because she's turning away. This is, I think, the quintuple salvo. No, here's the quintuple. That's the five. In the meanwhile, the Marseillaise got hit pretty bad. She got torpedoed. Good lord, why is this destroyer taking so much damage? Focus fire on the Marco Polo. Please do some damage against her. She probably has a decent amount of belt armor. Yeah, look at that. 6.8 inches of belt armor. More fire and a flash fire even on the Benedetto. Finally. That took me way too long. Um, Katina, unless you have any miracle plans to run away. And that was not a pun on the French. I just hoped that she was going to avoid the torp. Yes. Not by much, though. Uh, join the other group. There's torpedoes coming every which way. I'll probably get hit again. Flooding on Marco Polo. Again, these ships are very well designed. Very well protected. Lots of firepower. Fortunately, they haven't been able to do that much damage to the 5-inch guns yet. But I imagine that that's about to change as the light cruisers get closer and closer and closer. And provide much, much more of an easy, penable target. At least it looks like the heavy cruisers are now capable of doing some damage. The light cruiser sinks to flooding? You must have been torped. No! Well, yeah, just not by me. Another destroyer hit her with two torps. That might have been the Angelo Bassini. She just launched torpedoes. And all of a sudden, the Montebello is no more. If they could do that against the Diana, I would be very happy. But I suppose that they're not quite that stupid. Marco Polo has taken some damage. But seems to be alright. Protectrice. Maintain pressure on that heavy cruiser. Because we're getting closer. Six kilometer range. Which means that these guns are going to do definitely more and more and more damage. And have less trouble penetrating the belt armor. Smoke up on the light cruisers. Damage wise I'm doing relatively better than a few hours, well a few hours ago. Um, than about 20 minutes ago. As I have now done 8600 damage and they have taken 13. Although what I don't know is whether the torpedo hits are counted on my team or theirs because I have registered four torpedo hits but I believe that I only torpedoed the Diana once and I think that the game might be counting the hits on the Montebello as my damage it's not really correct okay swap fire to the Giuseppe and Torpedo the Iriquito. Iriquieto. Use those fours and the twos. And get that destroyer out of my way. The light cruisers are still getting hammered by the heavies. Let's try and line up behind my heavy cruisers. What was that? Was that something exploding? No. Yes, a modern nation. Okay, destroyed secondary gun, flooding. Giuseppe Garibaldi turns away as she comes under fire from the heavy cruisers. Not a bad plan. Next target, Francesco Ferruccio. She is turning to port, opening up a broadside. Chance to pen, blossoming to 40%, 50%. Torpedo in the water. That's going to be a problem for this heavy. Detach, hard to starboard. Come on, this is your opportunity to do damage. Use those accurate guns of yours. 
Nope, no joy. Oh shit, there's a lot of fish in the water. When they mean that there are more fish in the sea, this is not what they meant, right? I don't think that that's what they meant. Why is this thing not taking fire? Because I didn't have my gun set to it. Okay, that would do it. Hard to port. The other cruisers are fortunately a bit slower. They're a bit farther behind. Okay, the Dupuis managed to evade. Target Marco Polo again, because she's once again open up. Light cruiser still trying to tangle with the Suprema. Maybe that should be my target as she's broadside again. Chance to pen? 50. I'll take it. Switch fire again. You're gonna have to turn harder than that, Ambuscade. Maximum. Yeah, she's safe. Oh! Protectrice, not safe. Taking two torpedoes from the heavy cruiser. Any of them. Not really sure which one, but... Doesn't matter, there's plenty to pick from. They have one, two, three, four heavy cruisers operating very close to my heavies. Five, actually. They also have the Sirena, which has done a little bit of damage. Probably not nearly as much as some of these others with their torpedoes. Here, 3.6 from the Francesco Ferruccio. The others haven't really done that much. Protectrice sinks. Shit. Maintain pressure on the uh, Iroquito with the secondaries. Just keep badgering that heavy cruiser. Ambuscade, turn again. Hard to port. Ooh. Close enough there. Uh-oh. The ship's almost dead in the water. She can do four knots. Oh, shit. I still have a destroyer here somewhere. Commandant Lucas. I sent her out as she was reloading her torpedoes. Time to bring her back in. Suprema almost sunk. That was a torpedo against the Prote. Requito taking some damage, but not nearly as much as I would like, and not as fast as I would like it. Suprema, come on. Her structural integrity is going down, but she's not flooding. And on top of everything, I still have a very high concern about more torpedoes coming in. I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter that much, because I'm, I'm going to lose this fight anyway. But I just want to see how much damage I can do while I'm going down. Flooding on the Suprema. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I need to flood the ship out. There's an incoming torpedo set, actually, from the Marco Polo. Now, for those of you who are wondering, why do you always push in? Why do you always brawl like this? Well, this is my experience of fun. I could snipe at 15 kilometer range and just hope to trade enough damage. But I find that really boring. Whereas trying to push in and doing damage from up close with as much, uh, let's say, as much vigor as possible, dodging torpedoes left and right, or, well, not always dodging torpedoes, I find that way more interesting. Let me dodge torpedoes and probably die fast, rather than sit and watch a match where I have torpedoes or where I have ships slugging it out over 15 20 clicks for hours and hours and hours not my idea of fun another incoming salvo from the suprema but she did not keep into mind that i was turning with the dupuis dupuis sorry not dupuis dupuis all guns including secondaries on that ship The Suprema is still very much refusing to flood. A bit of damage against the Francesco Ferrucci. Ferruccio. Not enough. Come on, give me, 
me a 15 gun broadside here. Look at these ships. They're not they're not bad, my heavy cruisers. I quite like the design. I just wish I had about twice the budget. Twice the budget, 5,000 tons more displacement. That could have made for a really nice ship. Ooh, I lost a gun. Uh-oh. No matter, the Dupuis is toast. But the Suprema is too. Unfortunately for me, the Italians have a bit more ships that they can trade. I cannot keep up with the amount of ships that I'm losing. Whereas they have no problem with it. Okay, at least the transports are away safely. Light cruisers. Hello? Here. Damage done, 11. Damage taken, 22. Considering that I started at a severe disadvantage, as far as ship numbers are concerned, I'd say the French fleet didn't do that poorly. These guys fought quite vigorously. They were able to do a substantial amount of damage against the Italian fleet, but there's just no shortage of Italian ships. These guys can keep this up for a long, long, long time. That's the problem. I would need a bigger budget to build a bigger ship. Or ideally, just a bigger fleet. But I think the biggest problem that I had was not having torpedoes on my ships. Or at least not enough of them. Oh, there's the battlecruiser again. Oh, I was not intending on a ram. Evade, 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 evade. Flash fire, Marco Polo. No! <laughs> Marco Polo, not taking any shit. Dunks four torpedoes in the ambuscade. Immediately flooding the ship out. She's gonna die. There goes the ambuscade. Another salvo comes out versus the Roland. Or Roland, as the French would probably put it. At this point, even the six inch guns have a pretty healthy chance of penning. But the problem is they're not hydraulic, or they're not improved turrets, are they? Ele no, they are electrical turrets. So turn faster. Because I'm trying to turn the ship to evade any torpedoes and not go for a ram, but that also means that I cannot really bring the guns on target. Katina, you have a perfect opportunity here. Marco Polo is stationary. Thank you. Do me a favor, fire armor piercing. Might give you a slightly better chance to do damage than HE at this range. I'm not sure what the AI would pick. Flooding. Keep pushing. Second flooding. It just dings off. Look at the amount of damage that I'm taking from those 5 inch guns. Or whatever the guns these are. Two inch guns. Two inch guns doing substantial amounts of damage to the Katina. And the torpedo will finish her off. Alright, Roland. You know what? We're just gonna go for a... Uh, just a crash. Just a ram. Ambuscade. Is dead. Leaving just the Marseillaise. But I don't expect her to last long. Because she's still a sitting duck. She's still only doing four knots. Roland, try to do... Oh. Try to do a ram before... Before you go down. Marco Polo might flood, though. 2%. 0%. Okay, and that means that all I have left is the Cumanon Lucas. Uh, humor me. Torpedo the heavy cruiser. Turning circle 531, sonar 3. They probably see the torpedoes before they even leave the tubes. Torpedoes are all the way. Marco Polo detected the torpedoes. <laughs> Wait, which, which is Marco Polo? That ship. <laughs> you know you're screwed when even the sinking ship is better at detecting torpedoes. <laughs> What the hell? 
So, let's see. They started out with uh, five heavy cruisers, of which I'm still seeing three. They started out with five light cruisers. Um, I'm still seeing one, two, but there's potentially more. And one of the kills wasn't even mine. One of the kills was theirs. They they managed to torp their own heavy, or sorry, their own light cruiser. They start with 10 destroyers, and based on what I have done so far, I think I've sunk two, maybe three, but more likely two. Come on, Lucas, flooding quickly. Yeah, this was just a complete impossible mission. This French patrol fleet, as Ilbrink put it so uh, delicately, is just way too powerful. Wow, that DD got unlucky. But for a DD with few bulkheads, you're remarkably survivable. Anti-Flood 2. Yeah, right. We need to have a word about Anti-Flood 2. What the hell? Look at this thing. She has an active flooding. But she's actually pumping out the water. I think that maybe the AI gets a flooding buff. In the sense that when they get flooded, when they take a torpedo, they don't take as much damage. Or they just have a far better anti-flooding system than my ships. Because my ships generally don't work like this. Or at least it sure as hell doesn't feel like it. Alright, this is where I'm going to end this uh, Mission Impossible. Marseillaise is the last surviving ship. She has done a bit of damage. But most of it... I think was done by other ships. Because 379... Sorry, 397? Not good enough. Alright, Mission Impossible failed. That's kind of what you get with an impossible mission. As again, uh, this will be the last scenario that I do with the transports because they are just incredibly frustrating. And there we go, there goes another one due to flooding. They're just incredibly frustrating. So if you have a scenario for me, by all means, send it in. But the moment that I see you're supposed to have transports, it goes straight to the bin because I find this very much unfun. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you soon for the next video.